Hi everyone, welcome to the show and Happy New Year. Hope everybody's doing well. Hi Grace. Hi Marivier. Hi everyone. Happy New Year and may the New Year be better than last year. Correct, Marivier? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. It must be kinder. Yeah. More shining, more shimmering, more splendid. I love that. <laughs> right? Yeah. So and with that, we are happy and honored to have the Filipino cast of Aladdin on Broadway. What a yes, waste. Oh Our first interview of this for the year, right? So before we start, let's show our reviewers a glimpse of Aladdin, the Broadway musical. Yes. Yeah. Go. That's Aladdin, and that was um, with uh, Adam Jacobs, Grace, mm -hmm. uh, Filipino um, Aladdin in the cast. So we're happy. Yeah, I've seen the Broadway show for twice, so I always enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, seeing our um, Filipino cast in that Broadway show. Yes. Okay, so let's start introducing our guests. So for tonight, mm -hmm. we have three wonderful yeah. Filipinos on Broadway who are with Aladdin. We'll start with uh, uh, Don Darrell Rivera. He is uh, playing Yago. And we also have... We also have Angelo Soriano, who's part of the ensemble and plays Omar and Yago under study. Mm -hmm. And yeah. last but not least, we have mm -hmm. Heather Makalani, who plays under study for Jasmine and is part of the ensemble as well. So let's have them. Yes. Welcome to the show, Dawn. Welcome. Thank you. Angelo. Angelo. Hello. Welcome, Heather. I'm so Heather. happy, so honored to have you here. Oh I'm my so gosh. excited. Happy Amazing. New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks for having us. Thank you for your time today. So, yeah, let's start the ball rolling, and I'll start with the first question. Okay, so let's talk about your roles in Aladdin and your favorite parts of your performances. So let's start with Don, DDR. Sure, uh, this is a good question. So I play Iago uh, in Disney's Aladdin on Broadway, the, the villain sidekick. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite part of uh, being a sidekick is uh, being a little naughty. Like he's mean <laughs> and he gets to say uh, kind of everything he thinks about, which isn't always the case for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it's fun to be to be a little mean, um, but it's also fun to be funny. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, Don, is this your uh, is this your specialization comedy? Have you always been a, a comedian on stage? You know, I would say yes. Uh, originally, when I when I graduated from college, um, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to do Shakespeare for the rest of my life um, because <laughs> I also love Shakespeare. But uh, musical musical comedy is like. Uh, it's kind of my go-to. I've, I've done quite a few musicals in my career and I just love it. I love, I love making people laugh. There's nothing like the sound of 1,700 people laughing at the same time uh, uh -huh. to really make you feel good, you know? <laughs> right, right. They all so well, they are. Okay. So how about Angelo? <laughs> Hi, yes. I, yeah. um, uh, I am in, as a, I am a swing in Aladdin, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. I, I am able to perform and cover any of the 12 male ensemble tracks you see in the chorus. And I also understudy Omar and Iago. So sometimes I get to step in there and be that villain sidekick that Iago, that, that Don Darrell gets to be every night. And so that's definitely uh -huh. one of my favorite parts of the job is being able to play the different roles at any moment's notice and, you know, see the show, perform the show from different perspectives every night. I think it keeps it awesome and fresh for me. 
Yeah, I have a question later, but let's ask Heather, what's her favorite um, part? So, uh, and I understudy Princess Jasmine. And in the ensemble, I would say my favorite part would be um, there's a moment where the girls come out, there's four girls that come out and we push open the palace gates and it's the, the opening number of the second act of Prince uh -huh. And we do this fierce dance number and we're like just far from the doors. And it's fierce choreography. That's one of my favorite parts in the show. Um, and then to... to Understudy, one of my favorite things is like that small one that says that you're going on today, like mm -hmm. butterflies and excitement, and uh, learning to concentrate and hone and and like put a put a, uh, put a cover in the pot of your nerves. That's like weirdly one of the exciting things about going on. Great. So right. I'd like to ask Angelo Grace, yes. um, do you which part do you like to perform? Uh, better being Omar or being Yago? <laughs> oh, that's they both have their awesomeness. I think performing Omar is fun because I get to um, be in the most epic sword fight that you'll see on stage. Mm -hmm. epic, how awesome and, and, and action packed it is, but it's also super hilarious. Uh, if I am going for funny and going for um, dark humor and, and villainous role i really love playing iago because you know it's 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 hard to step you know in the shoes of don daryl the way he does the role amazingly every night but i get to be my own villain and kind of explore myself in that um, aspect as a performer and so i i love them both in different ways but most recently i played iago and that was a good time great okay i just have a a question for everyone like when the broadway opened the broadway scene opened how did you react or what was the impact of broadway opening since the pandemic maybe we'll start with heather well for me i the broadway reopening i did not know that i was having a job i didn't have a job mm -hmm. um, i found out maybe a, a month or two before rehearsal started. And and I was working at a nail salon at the time. That, that was just my little side hustle to get some money in. And I mm -hmm. remember coming home and being like so stressed, being like, I don't want to do this. I just want to perform. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> and then um, the day of my birthday, I was getting my nails done at the salon, funnily enough. And then I got a call from the agent and, um, I couldn't pick up because they were doing my nails. <laughs> and then, um, so I, I saw that it was a voicemail and then I started checking the email and it said, um, Aladdin offer. Mm -hmm. And I literally, my heart dropped in my, in my pinky toe. And mm -hmm. I was like, I just felt so lucky and like so blessed that I was able to have a job at the start of the reopening. And it, it felt like all the stars were aligning and that all my worries were for nothing because in the end, everything's gonna be okay. Um, yeah, so like Broadway reopening for me, it was just, I don't know, it was just like a dream come true. I felt so thankful and so grateful and happy that I get to be back with my performing, my cuyas, my Filipino cuyas. <laughs> <laughs> so Walter, were you in Guam or in New York at that time? Um, I was, um, I just got back from Guam, so oh, I was in New York. In New York. Okay. Wow. And Angela, how do you I, feel about the reopening? Oh, it was definitely the longest 18 months that anyone can remember, mm -hmm. not just me. Mm -hmm. But I, I, um, you know, there's some, there was some bitter sweetness there. I definitely looked back and, and told myself I was really going to miss being able to be home and have dinner with my mm -hmm. wife every night and mm -hmm. or just spend time, you know, uh, rediscovering myself and, and building my you know who who I was without the without the you know the routine of the show every night, but but with that being said, I, I definitely was so grateful that we could jump right back into a routine of an eight show week and do what we originally you know uh, trained to do was was to live the dream of being on Broadway and and remind ourselves how lucky we are to even be in such a show. To begin with, uh, definitely had to remind myself that you know 
the the gratefulness I had of of having such a prestigious, magical job. Now let's see from Don. Yeah, from DDR. There was so much joy uh, when I mean, you know, <laughs> I was counting down the days when I could be back on stage again because Aladdin has been such a big part of my life. I've I've performed the role now um since 2014 on broadway and before mm -hmm. that i was a part of the show in 2011 so um to have that part of my life kind of come back in such a celebratory way um it, it made me feel so lucky uh to have to have a show to come back to after the pandemic great so i have a question for um for dawn um you are you live in seattle and so your your family had to relocate in new york and um also um do you still feel you're a filipino or part of you is still filipino and um how does that manifest ever oh yeah i mean so i'm originally from seattle washington um mm -hmm. and i moved to new york to open aladdin um i moved in september of 2013. um mm -hmm. Moving to New York from Seattle, it was a huge culture shock already. Um, but something that actually helped me feel at home was seeing all the Filipinos and going to the Filipino restaurants and um, kind of like reconnecting to my culture that way. And like you know, calling my mom every every other week, like, okay, I want to make uh, I want to make machado. How do I do this? Um, and so I've I've reconnected with my culture that way. Um, but also my parents gave me a really balanced uh, childhood. My dad uh, was one of the founding members of a Filipino folk dance group at my school. So I, on Friday nights, I would do Filipino uh, folk dance practice and go to basketball, right? So I kind of had the best <laughs> of both worlds. That's um, great. So I'm really lucky to have uh, my parents kind of really supporting my heritage um, from a very young age. Amazing. And Heather, um, you're from originally from Guam, right? So how do you feel or how do you uh, like living in New York? It's it's difficult for mm -hmm. sure. It's it's a huge culture shock. Mm -hmm. but with being in New York, I have a love hate relationship with it. When I'm here, <laughs> I'm like I need a break, but then when I'm gone, I miss it. Oh. Um, but it definitely helped. One of the best things about New York is, is the food and the culture. Like any kind of food that you're craving, you can find it. And it's a melting pot. And I think that's one of the, one of my favorite things about living in New York. And that definitely makes it easier mm -hmm. there for sure. Do you think you will live here like long term or just for because there's a show? I say it's the five to ten year plan, but I, I'm very much a go with the flow person, and that's always uh -huh. worked for me. And right now, that this is where I see my life. Do I see it long term? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I, I definitely think I will see myself maybe returning to the islands one day. Oh, that's good. That's also very good. <laughs> and Angelo, you're originally from New York or New Jersey? No, I was actually born in Manila, and I, I immigrated when I was nine. So, I yes, I, I definitely will be staying in New York long term um, from here on. Um, but I definitely take all the opportunities to bring a little piece of home here to New York, whether that's cooking here at home, um, Filipino food of uh, and and kind of inventing some dishes as well. That is what, what I did in the during the pandemic, and or just hanging out with our Filipino uh, you know family from the show and going out and finding um, awesome food uh, down in the Hell's Kitchen Filipino food that's popped up there. Um, we definitely don't forget that, especially when we're in the building just joking around. Um, with you know jokes and humor and food and all that stuff, we definitely keep that in mind, and and it's just a it's just a part of us. It's just a part of our our heritage and our part of our traits of, of our everyday living. I think that you know embracing that is very important, especially nowadays. Great, you know, Grace. I saw um, Heather and Angela sing the uh, whole new world in Tagalog version, which we will play later on but um could you tell us either both either of you to um how the song evolved and um what made you think that it has to be a it has to have a tagalog version but, um can angelo speak i 
Yeah, I, I definitely was important to have a Tagalog version out there for people to see. I think that it was important to represent um, our Filipino heritage with, with the song that we get to hear every night, eight shows a week. Um, so it was it was uh, an easy given to to uh, to perform that and to share that with the world, and we, we had a good time creating it as well, right, Heather? Yes. Sorry, my dog had something to say about it as well. Uh, <laughs> it's good. Um, yeah, we just there there wasn't very many like we wanted to sing something of Aladdin, but we wanted to see how we could put our own twist to it and. I've never sung in Tagalog before, and mm -hmm. and Angelo and I were like, oh, why don't we sing in Tagalog? And it's so funny, like singing it felt so inside me, within me, like it felt so good to sing the <laughs> language. And I, yeah, I just wanted people to experience the language and to, to see it through Aladdin because it, it feels like more because everyone knows Aladdin, but now they're hearing a whole new world in a different language, and it's just nice to be able to represent my culture in this way. Amazing. Yeah, so um, Angelo spoke a little bit of Tagalog earlier, like he said pop to us, Marivere. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I okay. did. I'm just curious if, if most of you or all of you can speak Tagalog fluently. I know Angela does, right? Oh, po. yeah, I'm very fluent. Oh, okay. I speak Tagalog. I speak with my, my parents for sure. Oh, okay. How about that? How about that? How about that? <laughs> I, can, I can understand it fluently. Um, but if I need to make a sentence, it takes forever. <laughs> we practice. We practice in the theater together. We Back. practice. That's right. Okay. And Heather, do you understand? Conti um, lang po. <laughs> I I know like little phrases here and there, and uh -huh. my mom is also Ilocano, so she would speak to me in both Ilocano and Tagalog. So oh, wow. sometimes oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And both to me, so yes. I know when she's mad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why, she calls your name? Full name? Full name. She calls you your special name when she's mad. Oh, she, she just says a whole bunch of Filipino words really fast. <laughs> and that's when I know it's it's time to go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's go back to Aladdin. Um, can you talk about the significance of the story? Uh, what or, or rather, what's the significance of Aladdin to you personally? Yeah, let's start with Don. Yes, for me, it was a big part of my childhood. Right, mm -hmm. it was kind of the first movie that I, I saw where I could identify with a lot of the characters, not only mm -hmm. um, kind of physically, but also like story wise. Right, it's it's a really important lesson that Aladdin teaches to our audiences to be true to yourself, to be true to your mm -hmm. heart and, and listen to your heart. Um, and the fact that it's kind of disguised in a big, beautiful musical, Broadway mm -hmm. musical is, is uh, makes it even more special, not only for like kids and families, but also for adults and like people who, you know, maybe are just starting dating or like just got married. Like it's a great, mm -hmm. it's, it's great to, to see that romance, but also like be yourself. Like it's so cool. Yeah. Thank you, Grace. I have a message here from uh, our our agents that uh, Don is an interview, so oh, okay. you may you may have to leave ahead of uh, Angelo and Heather. Okay. I do. But thank you, Don, for your wonderful time with us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Have fun, you guys. See you soon. You make yes, you so proud. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. Maybe um, Angelo would like to answer the same question. Yes. What was the question? Yeah. What's, what's the significance of Aladdin to you personally? <laughs> I I think it's um, just like Don Darrell said. I, I it's yeah. it's it was a significant part of our childhood growing up, and and yeah, luckily um, all of all of the these Disney works that we know of and love, especially the ones that um, Alan Menken scored. Um, we're a big part of our childhood, my childhood, even across the water in the Philippines growing up, you know, the, those babies, those movies made it to me there. Um, but to be, to have the honor of performing Aladdin on Broadway, eight shows a week, 
is is significant because we get to represent a culture that that you know that that you know maybe doesn't have a, we don't have a lot of places on Broadway where we can just have these um, vast array of, of colors and you know multitude of culture and characters what mm -hmm. the same that, way that we have in Aladdin and so we're lucky to be in a cast that's so diverse and a family that's so loving um, because it truly is a family in Agrabah. Thank you. Amazing. And uh, finally, before we wrap up, let's hear from Heather. Uh, I grew up watching Disney movies. Uh, the very first mm -hmm. uh, movie that I saw at the theater, I was three years, three years old and my parents took me and saw Lion King. And I, I grew up singing the songs, loving the music and, um, and yeah, being able to to say that I can that I get paid to to sing Alan Menken's music and to, yeah, it's something that like made me so happy as a kid. And now I'm doing it as an adult. That's something that is so incredible. I remember when I was in Australia and I saw that they were launching Aladdin Broadway, and I saw like the Tonys performance or something on YouTube. I was that was one of the first shows that I saw that I was like, I can be in that show. I, I see like how they cast the show. I saw like what kinds of people were on the stage. And I was like, wow, I can be in that show. If they can do it, why can't I? And and then Aladdin auditioned my graduating year of college and got into the show. So yeah, it was nice to see, to feel represented on stage. That's how important Aladdin is. Amazing. You made us proud, all of you. We make you you make yeah. us happy and really proud. Like, oh, there's a Filipino there. Like, like really? living here in New York, it's really a different feeling. Mm -hmm. And even our friends back in Manila or Cebu or anywhere, they feel happy for you. It's like really, really positive energy for yeah. everyone. I right? always remind myself how much pride is important to our culture, to mm -hmm. our to, to our Filipino culture. I think it's all about that kababayan, you know, being mm -hmm. being such a community. Um, and so that's that's what keeps us, you know, going as far as living our dream and representing our people, right? Right, right. So thank you so much for all that you do and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Thank so you so much for having us. us. Before we let them go, can we ask them to um, invite our viewers to come see them? Yeah. Um, the musical. Maybe Angelo can invite them in Tagalog. <laughs> Oh no! Right. This is a quiz. Uh, please, please come and see Aladdin on Broadway. You know, it. It. The mga mga impor, importante tong yung tong trabaho namin sa amin. This is our dream, and this is mm -hmm. what we love to do. And the best way you can support is to bilhin mi mga tickets. Lahat ng mga tickets. Just, just get it sold. We're we're trying to sell the tickets, getting everyone in the door, and really experiencing the magic of Broadway, and there's really nothing like live theater. So come and see Indeed. us. Indeed. Yes. It's the highest yes. art form. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so let's hear from Heather, too. Yes, yes um, the magic of theater, there's nothing like it. And with theater is nothing without the audience, you know? It's, it's not just about us performing, it's our connection with the audience. The audience has a connection with us and we have a connection with them. And it's a it's a relationship. As soon as you enter the theater, we have a relationship with you and you're taking us on a journey and we're taking you on a journey. And um, yeah, it's it's one of the best experiences of a lifetime to, to, to experience that magic and that that electricity when the, when the house lights go down and then the, the yes. music starts playing. Okay. It's electricity for everyone and you have to experience that. And we, we want to take you on that journey with us and we can't wait to share Aladdin with you guys. Thank you. Oh. Thank you both. Joy and for the soul, that wonderful, magical spectacle on stage. Mm -hmm. And we are so proud of you again and again saying that. Yes. So. That's about it, Grace. They have to move on to another interview, okay. I guess. Oh, they're so busy. Ready to rest. Guys, good luck, and um, we hope to see you again on Broadway. We will be there to support you. Let us know. Salamat po. Salamat. Salamat. Take care. Thank you to Bonnie, okay. and thank you to um, 
Craig. Oh, Greg, Greg, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Wani and Greg. So, mm -hmm. um, when we uh, proceed to the next mm -hmm. segment of our show, it's going to be a discussion on um, COVID-19. COVID yes. 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 I'm so excited to see the Tagalog version. Uh, yes, we will play it. Yes. I want Let's to take a look. It. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> 